Welcome, everybody. My name is Scott Holohan. I'm the Public Relations Manager for District 40 Toastmasters. Uh, we have the pleasure of having a bunch of dignitaries in the house tonight. We have the current mm -hmm. trio. We have Don Schultz, Gene Bailey, David Hill, and we've got our featured speaker tonight, Johnny Randolph. He's our DCP Chair, Distinguished Club Program Chair. I'm going to hand it over to Don and he's going to introduce Johnny uh, for our presentation tonight. Okay, great. Thank you, Scott. And welcome, everybody, tonight. Good evening. And I'm really excited about this Wednesday webinar because it's going to be both intera interactive and also educational. So from an educational perspective, what Johnny's going to do is describe the Distinguished Club program how a club can achieve that, what are some of the minimum requirements, and also we'll have some interaction where you as a, either a club officer, club member, or a district leader can ask him questions about what are some different scenarios or what kind of options that you could do maybe to help you become a distinguished club. Uh, for those of you who know this, uh, have been around for a while, Toastmasters uses the Distinguished Club program not as something that is a uh, sort of like a, a red, green, or, or yellow stoplight as far as the clubs um, can't be good unless it's distinguished, but it's really more from a perspective of helping clubs use analytics and helping leaders have analytics about the clubs that are really doing um, outstanding and support of their members. And it's about helping the members be successful. Uh, and without having sometimes some metrics or some, some analytics of what is a successful club, but there's no independent ability to do that assessment, um, you know, clubs may not even know what they need to do to achieve excellence. So in Toastmasters, one of our core values is excellence. And so Johnny's going to be talking to you all about how to help your club and, and maybe the clubs that you're supporting become excellent clubs. So first of all, let me uh, introduce Johnny. Johnny Randolph is a wonderful Toastmaster. He comes from Michigan and, you know, us Ohio State fans don't hold it against them too much. But for the last uh, several years, it's been very fun uh, teasing Johnny about that. However, uh, Johnny is an excellent Toastmaster. He's a wonderful leader. He's been a TOI presenter. He, <laughs> thank you, Gene. Uh, he, uh, he's also been in very, in, in act, very active in multiple clubs, supporting them at the club and member level. Uh, this year, he served as our area C23 area director. And again, it's done a great job. So without further ado, give me a warm District 40 welcome to our Distinguished Club Program Chair, Mr. Johnny Randolph. Johnny. Thank you, Thank you very much for that, Don. And one thing that I have to dispute you on is you all always give me a hard time about being a Michigan fan. Every one of you, every time I see you, it's like, how's it going? How many more days to the next butt whooping? So you always give me a hard time, but I know it's all in love. Thank you it very is. much. As Don said, yes, I am the DCP chair for District 40. And DCP, I know we are accustomed in Toastmasters to using acronyms. Well, is that my phone making that noise? Okay. Um, using acronyms. DCP for distinguished club points. And within any organization, as Don was alluding to, the organization has metrics to help gauge the overall flow of the organization. Uh, could somebody go, is that me? Is yeah, no, I, I, you know, this is Scott. If, okay, you're on. Somebody go on mute, please. Please, please mute your phone so that we can minimize. I can't for some reason see the phone caller that's on their phone and mute them. So for anybody who's on their phone, please mute your phone. Thank you. Yes. And the DCP, DCP are metrics that help gauge the overall flow and the overall health of a club. Now, they're not the only measure of how well a 
Justice Club is doing, but they are an important one. DCP is important because it helps the district identify your stronger clubs and some of your weaker clubs. Your district officers, such as your area directors, your division directors, your trio, so that they, that they can know where to allocate the resources best to help out your club. DCP is also good for your actual club because they provide a roadmap to help you to become a better club. They provide a roadmap for your presidents, uh, your VPEs, your VPMs, your secretary, and just the club in general. So in District 40, in Toastmasters, while it is not the end-all, be-all, we do take our DCP very seriously. Because in Toastmasters, we're all about helping each other. DCP gives us a great tool to be able to monitor the health of our club. Regarding the DCP, there's a number that sticks out, or a couple of numbers that sticks out. There are various goals within the DCP program that you must meet. If you meet five of those goals, we refer to you as being distinguished, and you can see that right here at the top. If you meet seven of them, you're select distinguished. You meet nine, you are president's distinguished. And if you are in Toastmasters, you know that's a big deal. Before any club can ever consider being in a distinguished status, they've got to meet some minimum membership requirements. In order to be considered as a distinguished club, you have to meet 20 members. 20 members is what Toastmasters International has decided that this is a healthy club. And it's primarily because we've recognized that about 60% of members attend their biweekly or their weekly meetings. That's 12 members attending a meeting. If 12 members attend a meeting, that's enough for every single person who attends the meeting to have a role without having to duplicate roles. Three speakers, three evaluators, your Toastmaster of the day, your tag team, your general evaluator, and your table topics masters. So if you get 12 people at a meeting, that is a healthy meeting. There's one caveat to this 20 person requirement. It's also if you've had a net growth of five members from the previous year. If you ended the previous year with let's say 12 members, Toastmasters recognizes that to go from 12 members to 20 members within a term might be a little difficult. Therefore, you have a net gain of five. Instead of having to reach that 20 bench, 20 member benchmark, you only have to reach 17 members. That's a net gain of five. If you had 13 at the end of the last term, you have to reach five, that would be 18 members. 14, you have to reach five members, that would be 19 members. Mm -hmm. I've actually seen that there have been clubs that have met all of their DCP goals and they didn't meet the membership requirement. So they didn't get any credit. Meeting that membership requirement is very important. The DCP is broken down into various sections. You have your education goals that you're required to meet, membership, training, and administration. I'm going to explore all of the various sections, and we're going to start at the administration section. If you look down here at the bottom, the administration section, you have to complete two tasks in order to get one point. It's the 10th point. The reason that I started with this one is because it is, in my opinion, the simplest goal to meet. One of the requirements is you have to submit the club officer list on time. We all know that the Toastmasters term starts July 1st and goes all the way to June 30th of the next year. Each new term, new officers are elected. When those officers are elected in the prior term, all you have to do is go on to the Toastmasters International website and submit 
who are going to be your new officers for the new term. It requires very little effort. Your secretary logs in, updates the list, and you already have half a point towards your DCP without exerting much effort. To get that other half a point, you have to renew at least eight members during one of the two six month renewal periods. Eight members, you have seven officers. If all of the officers renew, you only have to find one other person. And in many, and in many clubs, the immediate past president is considered part of the officer corps. So that's one other member right there, eight members already done. So eight members renewing and submitting your officer list from the previous year, that gives you one DCP. You've only got nine more to go. The next DCP we're going to go up towards is the training. District 40, it puts on a great training. It's primarily called our TLI. We are fortunate in District 40 that our district puts on a great training is free. When we meet in person, they actually provide you with lunch and breakfast. I'm saying this because I just learned that this is not something that's all across the board in Toastmasters. I attended a Toastmaster meeting once at my company and it was in Jacksonville, Florida. I was working and I thought, I'm going to go to the meeting. I went to the meeting, the TLI was coming up, and they told all of the members that you had to pay $5 to attend. And my eyes bugged out, like, oh my God, you actually have to pay? And they looked at me as, yes, this is standard. And I told them, I'm from District 40, <coughs> and it's not standard. Each year, Toastmaster each year, District 40 puts on four TLIs, one in June, two in June, the June period, that early July period, and then one during the second term that begins in December. The training is great. It explores all of the officers. It talks about retention. It talks about mentoring. You get a lot of information. In order to get this DCP point, Four officers must attend that training, the one in July, the one in June, and then also the one in December. That's it. There's seven officers. We encourage every officer to attend because I definitely believe that the training you receive at TLI, it's invaluable for not only just Toastmasters, but if you're in any leadership position. The officers core just needs four people to attend, June to August and November to February. Not only do they host four TLIs, but they have makeup sessions called the club officer trainings. So they provide numerous opportunities for officers to get trained. And that helps the club receive a DCP point. Now, our next part of the DCP point is the membership. This one, might be the, one of the more challenging ones, especially for your smaller clubs. In Toastmasters, we have our veteran members, our current members, but your club, it always needs new energy, new perspectives, a new vision, that contrast between current members and new members is what makes a club dynamic you get a full spectrum of experiences. That's why in Toastmasters, a DCP point is for new members. We want to get four new members in. Four new members, you get new members in, they start doing roles, they start doing evaluations, they start giving speeches, and your club doesn't remain stale. It's a new opportunity. It's a new adventure. So we want to get four members in. And then you get four more members in for a total of eight members during your term. These are the 
three sections, the membership, training, and administration that helps you become President's Distinguished and the way you can get your DCP points. Now, before we move any forward, I know that I've talked a lot. So, Scott, is there any questions out there in the chat or does anybody have any questions? I don't see any in the chat. Now's the time if you'd okay. like to voice to vocalize your question, please do so. Right. Hey Johnny, I, this is Don. I do have an update. Is Toastmasters just announced over the last several months that TOIs in the winter can now start in November. So that's oh. a, a brand a brand new change this year uh, for started this last year, but we'll probably be implementing something similar to that this year, where we can actually start a little bit earlier in our trainings in the winter. Oh, that's that's great. Thank you for that, Don. Does anybody else have any questions about that? About anything that we've just discussed? Okay. Hey, Johnny, well, we're going to move for you. Uh, on the sure. were you going to get into the education parts? I'd like to know what's changing in the absolutely the education year. part was where I was going next. Thank you. It's a great segue, Scott. <laughs> in, in DCP, there are education requirements. What we this year is a unique year, and the reason that I say this year is unique is because the education requirements include both pathways and the legacy system. The legacy Where system they are, they don't, excuse me? I think Where somebody was don't? just. What are you doing speaking? I don't know what you're talking about. If, for those of you on the phone, please go on mute. We can, we can hear you. Thank you. Yes, uh, this season they include, like I said, pathways and the legacy system. The good thing about that is too, you still only need nine DCP points to become distinguished. That means you have more opportunities to become distinguished this year because after June 30th, the legacy portion is going away. Starting June 1st, DCP will only encompass pathways. Right now, if you want to right now in order to meet your education requirements the first one is the competent communicator when you first started toastmasters in your legacy system you got a competent communicator manual and a competent leader manual the competent communicator manual outlined 10 speeches it started from your icebreaker speech all the way to your inspirational speech and throughout that path it taught you many in valuable lessons such as how to move your body, vocal variety, working with a visual aid. I love the competent communicator. I still have my competent communicator and I received it back in 2014. And I still go back to this day and look at some of the speeches that I did. I might give them again just to see what sort of improvements I made from when I first started to where I am now as a Toastmaster. To receive a DC point for, for this goal, you had to have two people complete competent communicators. Then you had to have two more people complete competent communicators. That was four altogether. Then we moved on to your advanced communicator your ACB, your ACS, and your ACG. Toastmasters offered, I think it was 13 different manuals. And these manuals specialized in certain types of speeches. There was a humorous manual. There was an interpreted reading manual. There were various manuals that had projects in them that you had to complete. When you completed two manuals, a total of 10 speeches, 10 advanced manuals, that's when you received an education designation. If you completed one of them, you got a DCP point. You completed another one, you got another DCP point. Leadership is a mantra of Toastmasters. We literally say, 
this is where leaders are made. It is only appropriate that we have a path to discuss leadership. We had a leadership manual. It was called Competent Leadership Manual. And in that manual, it identified multiple projects that a Toastmaster could complete and receive credit for. Those projects included or maybe organizing a speech contest. They included doing roles in a meeting. They included leading some sort of project, various leadership projects. And when you completed all of those leadership projects, you were awarded what you call the CL manual. Once you had your CL manual, you had to complete various district roles and also various other types of roles. If in your club you had a person that met all the requirements, you got one DCP point. Follow that up with another DCP point. And these are all of the DCPs. And I kept saying DCP points. It's DCP or Distinguished Club points for the legacy system. After June 30th, these points are being phased out. They're a part of our legacy system. Recently, Toastmasters adopted a new education program. The new education program is called Pathways. It completely replaced our old education program. It's completely different. There are advantages, I think, to the legacy system, and then there's some disadvantages, I think, to the legacy system. But one of the main advantages of Pathways is that it's online. And as Toastmasters want to attract younger members, having a strong online presence is very, it is very desirable. We want to attract younger members, young people as we know they're online, so we have to go where they are. And all Pathways projects are online. When you sign up for Pathways, you take an assessment test, and the assessment may make a recommendation for what path that you can take. There are multiple paths. You can choose that path that they've recommended, or you can choose your own. It is your personal preference. In each path, there are five levels. In each level, there are multiple projects. When you complete the first level, I believe there are four projects in there, you can get credit for completing level one. With the DCP point, we want four members within your club to complete level one. After you complete level one, you're permitted to go on to level two. With level two, you only need two people. I should say that in level one and level two, for most paths, it's usually the same. So level two for one path does not differ that much from the other. Therefore, you need two level twos and then another two level twos. After you pass level two, things get a little bit more complicated. That's when you get into your specialties. That's when you're permitted to start to complete your electives. Toastmasters has recognized this. In order for you to get credit for completing level three and receive that distinguished club point, two members have to complete level three. And once we get past level three, it's when it really gets interesting. I recently completed level four. I had to complete a podcast and I thought of it initially as just a Toastmasters project, but now I'm trying to do it professionally. I've got my own podcast. I've got t-shirts and cards. And it all stemmed from the electives that I started off with Pathways. This is one of those advantages that I was talking about when I said that Pathways has over the legacy system. The legacy system doesn't encompass a, a podcast session. So there are many advantages to doing Pathways. And since this is a more complicated and a more difficult path, 
or more difficult level to complete, Toastmasters recognizes that we might just have one person who may complete this level. You complete, you have one of your members complete this level and you'll receive a distinguished, a distinguished club point. Then you move to the highest level. It's only five levels. Once you complete a level five in pathways, you've completed an entire path. And that's a big accomplishment. You've completed multiple speeches and leadership projects and electives, and you're on your way to becoming a distinguished club master, a distinguished Toastmaster. Toastmasters recognizes the difficulties in completing level five, and they only require you to complete one, have one member in your club complete level five. This is the makeup of the Distinguished Quality Program. These metrics are designed to help Toastmasters, help your district, help your club, help your club gauge the overall effectiveness of your club meetings. And not only does it do that, it's great for bragging points. I've had the pleasure of being a part of a club that is distinct, that is President's Distinguished, and we walk around with our chest pumped out just a little bit to show our club is doing this. Our club is outstanding. Our club is excellent. Working towards achieving your DCP point, like I said, it identifies you as being unique. It helps your district identify you. It also helps Toastmaster in general show that yes, this is a place where we are helping people to achieve their communication and leadership goals. I've talked a lot. I'd like to hear from you. At this moment, Scott, do we have anything in the chat or does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask? If you've got a question, please uh, use the chat or you can ask it. You can vocalize it right now. If you just go ahead and unmute if you're muted and ask your question. We do have one in the chat, which is more along the lines of what Don brought up earlier about the ovation education awards, the silver awards and the gold awards. That's a little bit different than the DCP. I did put I did put a link to the Toastmasters recognition award announcements, which they came out with, but I don't know if we wanted to go over that in words. Hey, Scott, so I, I can go over that maybe a little bit later. Okay. But I later. do have a question before for Johnny. Right. Uh, could you talk a bit about the Mom Moments of Truth program and how Toastmasters has designed that to help clubs achieve the, the Distinguished Club program goals? Absolutely. Moments of Truth. Moments of Truth is a program designed to identify those first impressions when a person comes into your club. Is our club, is our club, are we organized? Are we prepared? Do we fellowship with our with our members? Is there a membership ceremony? So the Moments of Truth is designed for a club to take a close look at how they execute their meetings, to identify those areas of opportunity where they can improve and also sustain those areas where they are strong at. Generally, a person comes in and they conduct it. There's a list of questions that you are asked. You're asked to rate them on a scale between one to five. For the weaker portions, you talk with your members to say, how can we improve in this area or rectify the deficiencies that we have? It's something that I would advise that each club should do twice a year. One at the beginning, when you first uh, elect your officers at the beginning of the term, and then once towards the middle part of the term to see how you've improved upon those areas of deficiency. 
Don, does that answer your question, sir? Yes, that's great. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. No problem. Okay. And uh, just a, a kind of a, a follow-up question on that as far as from the Moments of the Truth, Moments of Truth and Distinguished Club program. Johnny, do you have any recommendations if a, if a club maybe is struggling with either membership or attendance? I'm sorry, uh, keeping any DCP points. Well, um, some of the other things that they could do maybe to get help? Well, your district is available for you. Toastmasters is a unique organization, as in we start from the bottom up. And by the bottom up, I mean the clubs are the most important part of Toastmasters. Your district, your area, your division, they're there to support you. If you are having trouble with with membership retention, building members. First, I would advise you to reach out to your Moments of Truth chair, which is me, I'm Johnny Randolph, and let's have a Moments of Truth. Let's explore what's wrong with our club. And let's look for some ways that maybe we can improve upon that. And then if you still are having troubles, I would recommend you reach out to your area directors and your division directors. If membership is a problem, maybe you need to start throwing open houses. If you're not, if you're, if you're already throwing open houses, what can you do to promote them better? If you're having questions about your DCP goals and how to reach them, talk with your vice president of education. If you don't know what you're, what, if you don't know what DCP goals are, hopefully your moments of truth can identify that. So there are multiple channels that you can reach out to. There's lots of support within Toastmasters between your moments of truth chair, between your, your area directors and your district directors. It all depends on what areas you are having problems with. Excellent answer. Thank you, Johnny. Appreciate it. I, I do have one other suggestion, and I'm not sure if David is still at his computer, if he could maybe show his screen or or go off a of mute for a minute and talk about the Level Up program, because that's very closely tied to the Distinguished Club program. Uh, David, are you still there? Might have, oh, there he is. Of course I'm here. All righty. Hey, so thank you, Don. Basically, the level up, what I, the club growth team decided to do was just simply come up with a plan that we just want you the club to go just one level up from where you were the previous year. Whether it is you weren't even distinguished and you made it to distinguished, if you were distinguished and you made it to select, distinguish, whatever, just going up one level, and then you would get an incentive for it. To me, it's really important for us to kind of think that way. A lot of times we think, oh, let's be presidents distinguished, but that could be for a lot of clubs. But if we just take it one level at a time, trust me, it's great. Think about it this way, ladies and gentlemen. If we, if all the clubs in our district were able to just attain five goals and five goals only, that would make our district at least one third of the way to be a president's distinguished, if not smedley distinguished. So let's let's just look at starting at one level, take it one step at a time, and that's it. We know we're always going to have clubs. There will be presidents distinguished. We know we'll have clubs that are select distinguished, but let's help these other clubs that may be struggling to get to distinguished. Let's help those clubs who've been distinguished for a while to try to get them to select. And let's help those clubs that are select to try to get them to presidents distinguished. But thank you so much, Don. I appreciate you uh, asking me that question and giving me the opportunity to explain it. Go Bucks. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Yeah, go oh, down. We got you. Twenty twenty one. 
So, so I'll turn it back over to you, Johnny, to see if there's any more questions, Scott. And then at the end, I, we can go ahead and review the uh, Toastmaster website for the other programs too. We can do that together here. I can show it on the screen as well and talk to them. Thank you. I don't show any other questions in the chat. If you do have another question that you'd like to ask, you may do so on your phone or on your computer. Okay. okay. I don't I would hear take any other silence questions. As nobody has any, yeah. I'll take silence as nobody has any questions. Fellow Toastmasters, thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate speaking to you. And I will turn it back over to our wonderful district director, Mr. Don Chelsea. Thank you, Johnny. Let's give Johnny a round of applause. Thank you very much for all of your effort. Let's go ahead and go into the Toastmasters website. So I'm going to share my screen and then go ahead and pull it up here. So if you all can see my screen, here's the, the main page of the TI website as you go in. You notice um, I'm logged in right now, but you don't have to be logged in to do this. And then in the center part, you see a banner that talks about responding to the coronavirus. And in there, there is a learn more link that if you click on it, you'll get to lots of information about COVID-19. Uh, this part here um, talks about um, updates from Toastmasters, the various communications to members, club officers, and district leaders. Um, so if you want any information of some of the announcements about uh, the, the result of Toastmasters responding to COVID-19, you can find it all in this area here under communications. Uh, but what I want to show you a bit is about, there's also information here about online meetings. This talks about some helpful resources and helping your club go online or to promote uh, capabilities uh, for online meetings. Here's a neat one is if you've seen some of those neat virtual backgrounds in Zoom, you can download some of those right here. Uh, but there's a lot of information about helping your club meet online during this situation. Uh, there's a section called virtual victories, which again is, is a neat little section here. Um, and you, there's some different pictures of clubs who are meeting online. It's kind of neat. But what I wanted to do to answer the Melda's question is click on this recognition awards button. And then when you're in here, it goes over the different awards. And I'll just repeat a little bit about what the, the section here says is, there is a cause for celebration as although Toastmasters clubs around the world have been challenged, they've learned to adapt to the effects of coronavirus. And so what Toastmasters did is they wanted to focus on the positive and the positive energy and the resources being put forth for the clubs to help its members to still achieve its goals. And so the board of directors created these new awards at the club area division and district levels to kind of help out with that. So here's the club awards is the new online ovation education award. And this is one that uh, Malda was asking about. So here it says clubs will qualify for this award by meeting both of the following criteria by the end of the year. First, they have to indicate in Club Central that they are meeting online. So that if, you, if the club doesn't have this update into the website in the Club Central, then they will not be able to qualify. And it says here that if the club must have allowed online attendance between January 1st and June 30th. So in other words, if the club already allowed online attendance um, prior to January 1st, it doesn't count there. Or the club did not update their online attendance before June 30th, it doesn't count there either. Um, the other part is to achieve the listed education goals. So this is even if they didn't have the minimum membership criteria that Johnny talked about earlier, the first tier will be a silver award 
for those clubs that achieve at least four education goals, um, either in traditional pathways or a combination of the Distinguished Club Program. And then the second tier is for those clubs that have um, achieved six education goals, either um, traditional pathways or more. So, and that's a minimum. So if they've gotten at least four, then they will get the silver. But if they've gotten six or more education awards, they will get the gold. So Amelda, does that answer your question on this award? Yes, thank you. Sure, and here's something neat, and I don't think it's functional yet, but eventually they're gonna update it so when you click on this button, find your club, you will find out if you've been awarded that. So that something is, a, I believe, a, a future, future functionality. Uh, there's another one here called the Great Revival Award, and this is uh, presented to any clubs that were suspended by April 1st, but have now then re reinstated between, let me make sure I get this right, between April 1st and September 30th. So if you know of any clubs that because of COVID-19, unfortunately uh, were suspended, they, there's a great revival award in line for them if they're able to reinstate uh, before September 30th there. And then the, one, the other one that I thought was neat is this membership consistency and membership resiliency award. So this is one where based on the club's membership base, as Johnny described um, at the beginning of the year, July 1st of last year, this first award, which is the membership consistency award, is for any club that experienced no net member loss. So for example, if they started the year even with eight members, and at the end of the year, they, they may have lost four, but added four, or those same eight members never left the club, they stayed membership. They still get a membership consistency award for, for the club. And then the other one is if the second award is presented to any club that experienced a net member gain. So let's say they started the year with eight and they ended up with nine. It, that may not seem like a significant achievement um, after hearing some of the things uh, Johnny said about being distinguished, but I mean, in this environment uh, within COVID-19, that could be a huge accomplishment for clubs just to get back to their membership base or to increase their membership. So that's what these awards are and you can find them here. Um, so I'm not sure if they published these yet, but here's Johnny, one for Ari. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, this is really good information. I didn't know about this. This is great information. Yeah, it brought a, put out a newsletter about this really quickly. It just came out um, just within, Amelda, was that email out maybe a week or two ago? It wasn't very recent. I mean, that it was fairly May, recent. May 28th. Yep, okay. So yeah, within the last um, two two weeks or so. So here's a new thing for area awards, and, and this is this is exciting here. So we'll read this. Areas will be awarded for achieving 50% bronze, 75% silver, or 100% of paid clubs, allowing online attendance, as reported by clubs in Club Central. An area will be re recognized with a single award based on the area's performance as defined above. So if an area really works hard to get their clubs online and that club shows online on the website, they can actually get an online ovation award. And then there's a visiting victor. All area directors that complete 100% of their second round club visits by May 31st of all active and suspend. I'm sorry, of all active and or suspended clubs in the area will get this Visiting Victor Award. Um, and just to continue on, there's also Division Awards, um, another version of the online. There's a Paid Club Champion. So the top three um, division directors in each district with a net increase in paid clubs um, calculated from May 1st to June 30th as, uh, from the base will be awarded that and then um, also a membership payment award. The top three um, top three division directors with an increase in membership payments 
calculated um, from the base to April 30th will be awarded that. And now um, the district awards. So what this is what we can, the, and these are fairly new, is, let me make sure I click that. There's also a, an online ovation award, an academia athletes award. There's a paid club champion and also a membership payment award. So these are, these are brand new award programs now. For, so not only at the club, but it can be awarded some of these at the area division and district. So Imelda, did that help you a little bit with this information? Yes, thank you. Now, we haven't heard any details about what you get with this award. <laughs> If you get a ribbon or if you uh, if you uh, get showcased someplace, maybe the online um, online Toastmaster magazine, I haven't heard anything about how, but I'm sure they'll put up more information on here shortly. So excellent question. Any other questions about some of the COVID-19 recognition awards? Scott Brown had a question about making sure that your club has published their meeting online. And I believe you have to go into Club Central, into the Club mm -hmm. Demographics section, yep. Club Central, and then update your, you, you just insert your Zoom link or whatever you're using for your online meeting mm -hmm. URL. And then just uh, also check the online acceptance question mark. Just make sure you click yes there. Do we have time to show that real quick? Yep. Okay, well, let's let's do it. Okay. So here I am on Leadership Central, and then we'll go to Club Central. And since I'm an officer for uh, Encore, I went right into it here. And then, as you mentioned, you want to go into the Club Club Administration. Yep. Yep. Club Demographics. And then here's the information, and here it is, online attendance accepted. You wanna click that yes button right there. Can everybody see that? And that's how you get credit for some of those COVID-19 awards? Mm -hmm. Yep, awesome. if everybody goes awesome. in and submits this information, they, they will get credit. You can oh, put that's... your online meeting URL there, or you can just put it on your website or how they could RSVP. Uh, right. Okay, so that's that's a must. We have to put something there in the URL. Correct. You, yeah, it's optional that you could put the meeting URL there. They they can go to your web page if necessary, there. but you could put that there. Well, yeah, I'm not so sure, um, Scott and Imelda, that it's it's mandatory for you to put the URL for you to get that credit that we're talking about the awards. The credit is based on if it's indicated here that online acceptance is accepted. Now, I will say I completely agree with Scott. It's, it's great if they also put this in here. It is optional, but if they put that in here. Um, some clubs are a little sensitive of doing that because they, especially closed right. clubs, they may We're not cool. want to put that on there. Um, however, this is the part right here that's very critical that's clicked for those awards. Agreed. Perrin, did that help, Imelda? Yes. yes, I've checked that uh, since the time we started doing online meetings. It's just okay. that we do not want to publish the URL address unless uh, with permission. So we have indicated invitations for people and asked them to email us. Right. We have meeting Thursdays. They last by Thursday, so we can give them the link. So we don't, we don't uh, advertise the link. Generally. And that's, I think that's okay. Which is smart. Yeah. yeah. Because typically what will happen is on every website, there's a click a button to contact the club and either the, right. the email on file or, or however the club does that. They, that's how you can go ahead and give them that 
connection information. So, so you're you're exactly right. So that's all I have, Scott. I'll turn it back over to you. I'm not sure if Jean or or David or yourself have any additional points, or or also obviously Johnny. Anything else? I don't. I just I just wanted to uh, make sure everyone is aware that the only thing that will count towards your DCP, as far as the legacy system is concerned, is the DTM not the ALS, just the DTM starting 1 July of this year through July, uh, June 30th of next year. So it's only the DTM, even though a person will be able to submit for the ALS, it will not count as a DCP point. So please, DTM will count. David, will there be seven educational awards or will there be still six? As far as I know, it's still six. Uh, I'm not aware that they are changing it to seven, uh, but we will see once this goes to pathways only. But it, the, from my understanding, everything is still going to pretty much remain the same. It's just gonna be everything as far as levels instead of um, how we had it before in the legacy. Okay. And if you want a cheat sheet of what Johnny covered, if you go to this, the Distinguished Club Program page and click on Club Performance, that also covers what are those six legacy club educational goals the six uh, pathways goals and also the uh, four different administrative um, goals that Johnny talked about. So here's another cheat sheet that covers that same information he covered as well. Yeah, that, that's good that you pointed that out, uh, Don, for everyone. I know Johnny went over everything. I, I would just say, think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Most of the time, you're gonna have people in your club that are going to definitely get you educational goals. Where a lot of clubs fall short is they focus on goals one through six, and they don't really pay attention to goals seven through 10. If you are VPE, monitor more the 10 to seven goals, because again, like I said, you only need five, to get to distinguish, seven to select and nine to presidents distinguish. A lot of people either tend to fall short either on goal seven and eight and nine. Those are usually the three where right at the end of the year, they realize, oh my goodness, this didn't happen. So make sure you get your officer training goal period, a minimum of four and either the four and four or a net growth of five. If you get one of those two, you'll be good to go. Interesting. I never knew that. I always thought those were the easier ones. Interesting. No, no, those are the ones that Donna tell you and so will Gene. Those are the ones that- I mean, I believe you. Come, come June, all of a sudden people realize they haven't had officers trained, so they don't get the, the point or they oh. um, definitely the membership usually and sometimes it's the membership, renewal yeah, yeah so the okay. membership i would get but i the, yeah the other ones are so i won't say so easy but they're easier i would think that people would want to get those you would first. think so hmm. right you would think so <laughs> interesting but we're doing a really good job this year with our tlis and so yes. we, as johnny yes. mentioned you know uh june 27th is our next big one uh, so if you can attend that one please do so let's spread the word we really want as many people as possible hey, hey exactly. scott any idea of how many registered for the june 27 toi i think we have about 200. oh awesome. wow yeah we're doing yeah. good how yeah, many officers are there in the district yeah are we going to be to receive the link online training I'm sorry, could you repeat? What was that about? Can, 
are we going to receive the link for that online training? I don't remember yes. getting. Yeah, I can do yeah. that. I can get that to you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll send it. Sure. Just off the top of your head. Sorry. Just off the top of your head, how many officers do we have in the district? Well, so like, uh, it's supposed to yeah. be a little over uh, a thousand. It's like a thousand ninety two, I think it is. If you count okay. how many clubs, seven, and then multiply that by seven. I want to say last time I looked, it was like a thousand ninety two. But that, those will be lower because you have officers that are in different clubs, the same person, right? That are in different well, clubs. Right, exactly. But I, I'm just saying that's the gist of right. where we're right. at. Right. Okay. Um, it would so, be so over a thousand positions, but not necessarily individual officers. To you. Right. 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 Thousand nine. Okay. So it's 200 good at the first one and 200 at the second one? Is that that's, a good number? Is that, or is that consistent with uh, last? Okay. I'll just go. No, it's actually better than last year. Better. Yeah, better. Okay. Better than last year. Okay. So, okay, well, just curious. thank you all for attending. Scott, did you want to wrap us up at all? Yeah, that sounds good. I did put the registration link for the, the uh, July, or, I'm sorry, J uh, June. 27th TLI uh, in the chat box. So if you haven't registered, click on that link and it'll take you to the registration page where you can put your name and your email address. And then after you get that, or after you register, it will send you a link to the actual Zoom. So what I put in the chat is the registration link only. It won't get you into the actual TLI. So we want to make sure that you register so that we can get a, a record of your attendance. I remember registering, but I don't remember getting the link. Okay. Yeah. So when you register, Zoom should uh, take and send you whatever email address you used. It should send you a confirmation. And that confirmation has okay. the actual link for the TLI. Okay, thank you. I'll check my spam box. Might have been there. Yep, that's possible. And for Harold Thomas, I saw your note that your Zoom background <laughs> won't be able to be used here today at GoToMeeting. <laughs> but be, be very uh, happy that the district is going to be using Zoom exclusively next year. So that's that's our online platform. So exactly. you'll be able to proudly show your background when you're at <laughs> future Wednesday webinars. That makes me ecstatic. There you go. <laughs> you might be able hey, to use it this year, so we're going to use it for this year, right? Hey, Harold. Off topic. Were you possibly at Kroger on Broad Street a couple of hours ago, <laughs> sitting no. in a car playing Sudoku? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Kroger on East Broad? Yes, I was. I thought that was you. I almost said hello to you, but I was in a hurry. By the time I came out, you were gone. Small world. It is. <laughs> really? All righty. Well, uh, Scott, we'll turn it over to you then. That sounds great. Thank you so much for everybody for joining us tonight. I'm going to click on the recording so we can send this over to our YouTube channel. So if you have any friends or club members that have not had a chance or didn't get a chance to see us tonight, they can see us in the entirety on our YouTube channel. Thanks everybody for joining and we'll disconnect. All right, everybody.